Hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Sunday. We are on another adventure today. Um, we're gonna go with a couple of friends to on a little like bike trip. Mm -hmm. Um, that's only an hour away. Um, called this place Mo is Mexican. called Mo Monica Dam. Monica Dam. Monica Dam. Um, and so yeah, we're gonna head out. We just got all packed, got some water, got some snacks, got our sunscreen. bike pump, got our, sunscreen. got our sunscreen, and we are ready. Today will be like up to 22 degrees, but then in the next couple of days, it's gonna get up 30. to 30. So 30 fucking degrees. Yeah, so we gotta head out, um, enjoy the sunshine, and check out another cute little Dutch town. So let's go! Let's go! Monikin Dam. It is super cute here and it's very quiet. Um, everything seems to be kind of closed, probably because it's Sunday. But yeah, we're gonna go to the seaside. I think there's like a seaside port where we can maybe go to a restaurant. This is a cute little town, eh? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Beautiful day. Guys, clearly it's not the same day anymore, but we forgot to recap at the end of the day because honestly, I was so tired. Oh, yeah. It was such a, it was a long bike ride. Um, took about 50 minutes each way. And then on the way yeah. back, it took longer because we were going against the wind. So by the time we got home, we were done. We like passed out on the, the couch. It was just very windy when we got home and it was against us. So I was just like, yeah. trying to get through. I mean, it was like pretty much getting into fall. So yeah. it was getting colder. Yeah, but it was it was a good day a good day trip to a to cute little town yeah i mean there wasn't too much to see it's not a big town um but it has some nice views and we had a good meal there having some beers at a brewery the ride there was so scenic we've actually done a long bike ride to another um uh, yeah zan dam to zan see dam, um yeah. the, windmills the windmills in zan Shan. yeah so it was like 
I would say like it's they're both really cute little Dutch towns um, but I would say Zandam was like there's more stuff to see and like take pictures with and stuff um, but like the route there wasn't as beautiful because we were like by the highway mm -hmm. and like it was it felt a lot longer I'm not really sure I'm why. sure it's a nicer route to get to uh, Zanshan the windmill area mm -hmm. but we didn't take the route yeah and then but then the route to Monik and Dam it was beautiful it we, was were, we were so passing nice. by all of the farms with horses and cows, cows. and sheep yeah. and like it was just beautiful river mm. where like it was a sunny day so like people were just like on their boats and like hanging out mm. and like it was and and we saw these beautiful like farmhouses mm. with like amazing big backgrounds I'm like wow this is like the dream yeah, life yes. almost so that was really cool yeah and um yeah it was just like a really cute dutch town and i highly recommend it like if you want to do a decently long bike ride but not like break your back kind of bike ride if you're like a beginner bike rider like we are yeah. then definitely worth the visit it wasn't like too bad and no. there were like little cafes um on the ways if you wanted to take a break yeah. we did the same we yeah. just kind of like took a little coffee break as we were coming back because it was just so windy um but yeah it was a great time yeah. and i highly recommend it yeah but the video doesn't end here no we actually um recently went to a really good restaurant called ken sushi yes um it's in the west of amsterdam uh, cl very close to king of Almost on the street. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's omakase, um, Japanese food. And we've been in Japan before, and surprisingly, we've never had omakase. And for those of you who don't know what omakase is, because, uh, yeah, it's not as common here, I think. Like, I don't even know. There are probably a couple different omakase places here, but it's not like a super popular thing to do. Um, it's basically like chef's menu style mm -hmm. uh, sushi sashimi place. So they pretty much only serve sashimi and then like sushis. Um, and everything was pretty much raw. So if you're not into raw food, yeah. then omakase is and not the thing for you. At these establishments, they bring the highest quality fish. Mm -hmm. So from salmon to tuna, shrimp, etc. The highest quality, highest grade. And it's typically like you pay for the experience. Usually omakase is like extremely expensive. We're talking about like a hundred plus without drinks. You sit at the chef's table and then typically if you go to a really expensive place, it's usually a customized mm -hmm. menu. So the 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 whole experience is like you get to sit at the chef's table, the chef talks to you, and then they'll like introduce the food and like blah, 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 and they'll like cut the tuna in front of you. They'll make like this whole performance and then they'll like pretty much serve you the whole night mm -hmm. until you are full. That is typically how omakase works. Yeah. Uh, but, but at the, this place. But the beauty of this place, Ken Sushi, is you're not, we're not paying the premium price of mm -hmm. 100 euros per person minimum. Mm -hmm. Um, we were we only paid um, depending on which menu you ordered between 50 euros per person to 60 euros per person I think it can get up to 70 yeah. but then uh, because it's corona we're in the middle of a pandemic right now they can't serve people past 10 so like this meal was already like almost two to three hours so like if we went yeah. any longer we would have gone past yeah. the threshold yes yeah, so, so the price is amazing for what cut the food you're getting. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why is this chef, his name is Ken, that's why it's Ken <laughs> Sushi. Uh, he's not actually Japanese. He is Thai and it sounds like he has lived m many, many years in the Netherlands. And But he was um, trained, certified, whatever you want, want to call it. By, I have no idea what uh, is it. Properly yeah. uh, for omakase. Um, and that's the reason why he charges at this price point because I guess he's he said he's never been to Japan. So he's like, never been to Japan, and I assume that he doesn't have like the training from Japan. Yeah. But the food was else. amazing. So, and then he did the whole experience, like, explaining the food, and he was like hilarious, yeah. joking around. Like, because it's like the pandemic season, I actually feel very uncomfortable going to restaurants right now. But, and I was, I was like really anxious going to yeah. this restaurant just because we're getting into flu season yeah. and what's really awesome is like he has this like Japanese style mask yeah. and I say Japanese style because I see that 
like other vlogs where people are eating it in Asia, they wear the same kind of mask where it's like um, an invisible shield. It's like a shield. visor, clear yeah. visor. We'll show it. We'll show yeah. a video clip. But but because he's always talking, engaging with the customers. Mm -hmm. So if he has a mask on, it's gonna be really hard to hear what he's saying. So it's yeah. a nice, um, nice setup he has to, to be able to, to be like safe, but then you can him. also hear him as he's telling a story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's more comfortable for him because he the. The space was pretty warm and hot and stuffy, so like if they were there for like five hours, six hours, mm -hmm. that would be really uncomfortable for them. Oh, that's a good. Yeah. 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 Oh no, I guess. It's, no. <laughs> All right. Okay, three fingers. Eat it. Whoa! Properly. Yeah, you really have to flip it. <laughs> mm. Oh no. Told you. Oh man. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> Well, waited too long. <laughs> you have one job, man. Wow. Tuna. Mm. Wow. But anyways, it was a great experience. The food was so awesome. The prices were so like generally affordable. For it's a treat, one. but it's. Yeah reasonably priced for the experience you're getting totally um, our recommendation because it's a small restaurant like we said eight to nine people in the restaurant yeah um, they're booked up until next year so I think it's like three months yeah. in advance so, so, so if you want to try this Ken out sushi, go, yeah. go look them up on Google Ken Sushi in Amsterdam and try to get a reservation online you might be able to get something in maybe early 2021 caveat 50% of their fish comes from the Netherlands so it's not like you're getting like Japanese fish or anything we did get uh, Sutoro and Otoro mm -hmm. which is very rare to get here like I don't even know where he bought that fish from yeah. um, it's probably imported it's from important. somewhere but anyways amazing stuff good quality work, great experience, great prices. So highly recommend it if you're like craving some good sashimi and it's been really hard to find it. Yeah. Um, it's right in the heart of Amsterdam. Yeah. All right then, we are closing off this vlog here. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed um, our little biking trip yeah. and also our little gourmet experience yeah. here in Amsterdam. Have a lovely rest of your day and remember, subscribe to our channel if you want more um, of content about us expats moving from Canada to the Netherlands. We talk all about like how to move here, how to settle in, how to get your, you know, everything, getting your first apartment, getting your bank set up, blah, 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 blah all of that stuff that you need to settle into, um, uh, especially the in Amsterdam as expats. Yeah. So like this video as well if you enjoyed it. Please do that, please. <laughs> but have a lovely rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Bye.